This is the Volkswagen Tiguan R, and if it played NFL, it'd be a linebacker, because despite its significant height, width, and weight, it covers ground at an impressive amount of pace. Thanks to the guys over at Exhaust Notes Australia, I had the chance to spend a week with the Tiguan R to find out if it's all that it's cracked up to be, or if it ends up being all DSG fart and no poo. And that's quite handy, really, because only a couple of weeks ago, I had the chance to drive the Skoda Kodiak RS for a week. And once you take away the fact that the Kodiak RS is a seven-seater, the Tiguan is a five-seater, these guys actually share a lot in common. I mean, after all, they're both their marquee's athletic offering. They've both got a two-liter, four-cylinder turbocharged motor, seven-speed DSG gearbox, and four-motion all-wheel drive system. And out on the road, they actually drive quite similarly. I'm surprised actually by how comfortable the Tiguan R is, especially when it comes to its suspension. So I thought it was gonna be quite rough, quite taut, but to the contrary, it actually will deal with all except for the largest bumps really well. In comfort mode, it's quite plush, it's supple, and even in race mode, it's not too much for the street. I thought it would be a little bit overbearing, but it really hasn't been. Visibility is fantastic. You can see all around you, no problem. You've obviously got blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist. We have a 360 degree camera, which in my personal opinion is just about useless, but it's there. Reversing camera has been quite helpful with the weather that we've been having in Sydney this week. So basically all the assistance you could ever expect is present and accounted for, but you can see around the Tiguan R really well, which once again was something that I loved about the Skoda Kodiak RS, that even though these sorts of cars are really large and chunky, you can still see all around you. Once again, it's the type of car that also shrinks around you. So despite its size, once you get into the driver's seat, the car does tend to shrink around you and you have great confidence about where the corners of the car are. Storage wise, I think it's pretty good. We have a little central cubby between the driver and passenger seat. We've got a decent sized glove box. We obviously have door bins. The rear uh, seats can fold flat to give you over 1600 liters of storage. If you have those seats in place, you get just over 600. Now, for me, that feels like a lot of storage. Once again, coming from an MX-5, anything is gonna feel like it has a lot of space. But I've been reliably informed by a few of my mates that this may not be as baby-proof as you might think. That especially with the rear seats up, because babies tend to not like being squashed in a seat, there's little room for a pram and other associated goodies. Maybe for someone who doesn't have babies per se, but you just have a family that you need to cart around, there is a lot of space available here. I think the interior is stunning. One thing I don't like, which we'll get onto later, is the lack of physical buttons. So if you take a look around, you can see that VW has really leaned into the whole haptic feedback button system. There's just no physical toggles or switches, which seems to be a little bit of a trend at the moment. I do hope that's a trend that goes away because personally, I much prefer having physical buttons, but credit where credit's due, it does look sleek, it does look clean until of course you start pressing the touch screen and then it becomes littered with fingerprints. But you know, until that happens, it all looks very neat and tidy. So the Tiguan R comes in at $68,990. This particular version has a couple of optional extras fitted. We have the 10 speaker Harman Kardon stereo, which is absolutely sensational. You can crank it and it does not distort. It's just perfect quality in my opinion. Absolutely sensational. It's worth a thousand dollar admission price, 100%. We also have the panoramic sunroof, which is a $2,000 option. For me, I don't think that's worth it. If you're someone who has to have a sunroof, then sure, it's quite large. It almost runs the entire length of the roof. I just don't think it's overly useful, and I think you could save two grand quite easily by just saying no. You do get nice black headlining everywhere, so it's not like the panoramic roof is hiding anything or getting rid of anything that's of any concern. The steering wheel, I think, is a fantastic unit. I like how chunky it is. I like the perforated leather. I love the fact that we've got these big paddles behind the steering wheel, really showing you the intent of the Tiguan R. They feel substantial to click, and even on every single actuation, you feel like you're part of the process. That was something that if you've watched my Kodiak RS review that I really picked on, that the paddles were just too cheap feeling, they were too small, they were just too insignificant. VW has done a great job in the Tiguan R. And continuing on the steering wheel, I love the buttons that we have. Once again, it's all haptic feedback, but I like the fact that you have quite a lot of control over the car just from your thumb tips, but it's not too hard to get used to. You do kind of figure it out, 
a little bit of a learning curve figuring out the customizations for your gauge cluster, but once you get past that, it's all pretty smooth sailing. We do have this R button down near your left thumb. Now, the cool thing about that is you may be rolling along in comfort mode as I am now, and if you just want to do a quick overtake, or you just fancy putting your foot down and hearing the engine kick to life, you can just press and hold the R button about half a second, and then that puts the entire car into race mode. So the exhaust opens up, the throttle responds sharp, and gear shifter goes over into sport, and the car is set for max attack. As far as tech goes, we do have wireless Apple CarPlay, which ironically for me, I had to plug my phone in first, and then it would allow wireless CarPlay to work. So I'm not really sure if that's just a quirk of my phone or what, but I tried to pair it wirelessly, wouldn't work. I plugged it in and then all of a sudden it said, oh, would you like to use wireless CarPlay? Yes. But in the end it did work, so I can't fault it. And we do have three zone climate control. So we have two zones up front, one out the back. There's a USB charging port out the back as well as a 12 volt socket. So the entire family is catered for. As far as economy goes, VW claims eight liters per 100K on a combined cycle. My real world experience comes in just under 11. Now, once you're on the highway, it does come down to a more palatable number, but I've found that because this car just encourages you to sink your boot in everywhere you go, you do tend to use a fair amount more fuel. May not be an issue for some, but you know, keeping in mind, I guess this is the sporty model, maybe it's to be expected, but I think as I looked down and saw that number, I just thought, oof, okay, that's a bit more than I was expecting. So I suppose the elephant in the room is performance, right? I mean, after all, this has the R badge. You know, VW are saying that this is the sporty version, the athletic version of the Tiguan. It's the first time we've seen an R badge on a Tiguan. We've had the R line, but this is the first fully fledged R. And I have to say, it is an absolute riot. So, you know, as I said, at the moment, I'm cruising along in comfort mode. If I just press and hold the R button, it kicks me down into race, and all of a sudden, the gear shifts are a bit snappier, throttle response is really set up a notch, and also we get this beautiful exhaust note. So we'll see if you can hear it in cabin. It's just, it's so much fun, and it is truly addictive. Can't count the amount of times I've been driving along this week, and all I've wanted to do is sink my boot in. And I don't think that's a good thing. Honestly, I feel like I'm driving like a complete ass. Cars like the Genesis GV70 that I had, they make you want to relax, you know? They make you want to waft along and just be comfortable and someone cuts you off, it doesn't matter. You know, you go in, that's fine. This is not that experience. There have been times where I've been driving along, you give it a quick little squirt and then you look down at the speed and you realize that if there are any boys in blue around, you're in trouble probably says more about me than it does the car, but it's just something that, you know, I'm kind of glad I'm about to give the keys back because I feel if this was my actual car, I'd end up in trouble. Let's talk about the three things that I love about the Tiggy R and the three things that I don't. We'll start with the positives, of course. So the first thing has to be the performance. This thing is just an absolute riot. If you want to do a quick overtake or a bit of traffic light Grand Prix, it is just hands down so much fun. VW claim that it'll do zero to 100 in 5.1 seconds. I certainly don't doubt that, and I can even imagine the real figure is a little bit less than that. It just feels so fast and so quick in everyday traffic. Number two is the looks. That stands for the exterior and also the interior. I just think this is such a well-designed car. The outside looks so tough and so mean, and then when you're inside, it's just clean. It's all crisp, just high-end materials. It's just a really nice car to look at and also to be in. And thirdly is the steering wheel. Well, that's a little bit of a strange one, but I just love the fact that it is such a nice chunky leather unit. I love the functionality. I love the fact that it has steering wheel heating as well. So there have been a couple of times this week where I've gotten into it and it's been quite cold and just turning on the heating is really quite nice. Three things that I don't. Number one is the seats. And I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant here, I apologize. So this is the R, right? I mean, VW, make sure that you don't forget that because there are R's littered literally everywhere. We have big brakes, we have big engine. It's hinting at big performance, but the issue is these seats are just so flat. They're just base model seats. Now they should have given the seats out of the Golf R that had nice big bolsters that really supported you. You look at the Skoda Kodiak RS, for example, that had big bolstered seats and you felt snug and secure in them. 
Here though, you feel like you could just slide out as soon as you take a corner at speed. It's really, really disappointing and actually it is a deal breaker for me. As much as I love everything else about this car, these seats are that much of a letdown that I just wouldn't be able to consider it because it would just annoy me every time I got into it. Second is how intrusive all the tech is. So I do appreciate that tech and safety features have their place, but I find that the lane keep assist, it's just way too aggressive. It'll actually tug the wheel out of your hands. Okay, maybe that maybe I'm making that a little bit dramatic, but you do really feel it fight you. And because of the weather that we've been having here in Sydney, a lot of the roads are a bit pitted and a bit potted at the moment. So it has a hard time figuring out what is a lane marking and what is the actual road. And it results in just a bit of an unpleasant experience as you're trying to wrestle this car, deal with other drivers on the road, deal with the weather. It just takes away from the driving experience. And thirdly is the lack of physical buttons. So as I mentioned before, everything is haptic feedback. It's big touch screens. I understand that we're currently in the middle of a trend where manufacturers want to get rid of as many physical buttons as possible. And look, at the moment, it is kind of good, right? Everything works, it's clean, I get it. But 10, 15 years down the road, are those same buttons gonna work? I mean, you look at a car now that's 15 years old, all the physical buttons just work, right? Whereas I can imagine that these will start to fail. Um, the sensors might get a bit gunked up and all of a sudden you're gonna have a car that just doesn't operate as it should. Or maybe I'm just being a curmudgeon and everything will be fine, yeah, who knows? So what do you think of the Tiguan R? Is it a car that you'd want to drive? Is it a car you'd want to own? Do you think it's just a bit of a naff? It's a bit silly. For me personally, I think it's an absolutely fantastic car and I love everything about it, except for the seats. And I really hate the fact that they're that much of a disappointment. Throw the Golf R seats in and you've got an absolute home run. And I was sort of hoping I wouldn't think that, you know, because I drove the Skoda Kodiak RS. I was really hoping that that would kind of show that Skoda has taken the mantle from its bigger cousin. But I've got to say, jumping in the Tiguan R, it just shows you that Volkswagen really know what they're doing. I know there are a lot of people out there that just hate VW and, you know, that's another discussion, but there's no denying that they know what they're doing. Unfortunately, they don't know what they're doing as far as the seats go, but look, now we're just starting to argue with ourselves. Overall though, I think this is a fantastic car. If the seats don't bother you, then you will absolutely love this car. If you're someone who needs a little bit of power in their life, they want to have a bit of fun, then this can definitely do that. Not sure how well it would go on a track, but I'd certainly love to give it a go regardless. Anyway, that's going to be it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe so I don't miss any future videos. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one.